Tonight on Life on the Rock, we have miracle hunter Michael O'Neill. We'll see a clip from his new show and much more. Welcome to Life on the Rock. We have Michael O'Neill. He is the director and producer, founder of They Might Be Saints. So we're going to be talking about miracles today. He's also known as the Miracle Hunter. And we're now going to a clip from Michael's new show, They Might Be Saints. Michael O'Neill, it's good to have you. You have a radio show on EWTN that our viewers or listeners may be familiar with, but you're the miracle hunter. Let's talk about miracles uh, for a little bit, first of all, to start out this show. It's good to have you here on Life on the Rock. Thanks. It's great to be here. And that's the name of my EWTN uh, show, The Miracle Hunter. So that's, uh, that's my nickname that I go by. What is so uh, fascinating about miracles? I know uh, early on in my conversion, I think as a child, there's something awesome about hearing of the miraculous. What, it, what is it that stirs up within our spirit when we hear about just something miraculous, something that can't be explained? Well, what's kind of interesting is I really feel like when it comes to miracles, it's something that appeals to everyone. Uh, whether you're a believer or a skeptic, I think that uh, you know, when you have miracles, they embolden our faith when we're believers. And for skeptics, you can't just leave them alone. You have to dig into them a little bit and figure out what you, what's going on. You have to have an opinion about uh, the miraculous. So, so I think I'm I'm in a pretty good spot being able to speak to all different uh, ends of the spectrum, so to speak, when it comes to miracles. What are some miracles that stand out to you, uh, being a miracle hunter? Well, I think when we talk uh, to different religious traditions, uh, everybody is familiar with uh, healing miracles or, or medical miracles. Yeah. Those cases where somebody has a very serious illness and somehow they're healed and uh, they can attribute to the uh, intercession of a saint or to, to God's benevolence uh, in order for them to see uh, health again. But I think some of these very strange phenomena that we have in our Catholic Church, I mean, there are things such as weeping statues. Yes. There are things such as the stigmata in the case of Padre Pio, for example, somebody who exhibits the wounds of Christ. And we have Marian apparitions, Fatima, Lourdes, Guadalupe, these cases where Mary has graced us with her presence on earth. And then my favorite of all are Eucharistic miracles. These are cases where uh, flesh and blood, true flesh, true blood, manifest in a visual way on a consecrated host. And I think what's fascinating about that is that it proves the reality of, of what we have, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist, and science can actually validate it. And uh, all the other uh, miracle types, you know, that you need a little bit of uh, faith and belief, but science can actually take you pretty far along that path when it comes to Eucharistic miracles. I first learned about Eucharistic miracles when I came back to the church in 1997-98, and the miracle Lanciano uh, came, you know, was the first one that I read about. And you're right, just reading about it, I thought to myself, why wasn't I told this as a child? Why? It's, like, it's almost like an uncovered treasure. Um, it, it just really, it changed me. It changed, learning about it changed the way I went to Mass. It changed the way I prayed. I actually had the chance to visit Lanciano in 2014 and to actually be up close to the miracle itself and offer Mass right there. Um, just amazing. Uh, the, the amount of um, miraculous that people 
even as Catholics, we as Catholics sometimes take for granted that don't know about. Uh, your show, um, uh, let's talk about your show and some of the saints that are American saints that people probably don't know about. Uh, first of all, tell us the name of the show and why you called it uh, that. So the name of the program is called They Might Be Saints. Mm. And uh, for people who have sort of a, uh, a cultural reference to that title, they might know the band They Might Be Giants, which is a, 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 a band name from years ago. So it's kind of a play on that, and we can attribute that to Doug Keck mm. for coming up with that clever title. But the idea is we're looking at the people who might be saints, and those are people on the path to sainthood. There are four main steps to sainthood. The first is when you're a servant of God. This is when a person has died and it's being proposed as a possible saint. Then when their life has been investigated, every rock overturned, everything you've ever said, everything you've ever written, everything you've ever done is investigated by the Catholic Church. And when they come al along and say they, you've lived a life of heroic virtue, you're called venerable. And then only at that point do they start looking for miracles through your intercession. First miracle, you're a blessed, and then you're a saint. So we're really focusing in this program on servants of God, venerables, and blesseds, those people who are in the steps right before becoming a saint and people who might be a saint. Now, would you say that uh, I often, my, one of my professors used to say that saints often choose us. We don't choose them. Have you felt that? that have, you, have you felt a saint maybe kind of hunted you out instead of you hunted them? Well, people ask me quite often, who's your favorite saint or your patron saint? And I point to this blessed Carlo Acutis, ah. who you may have seen in the news recently. Uh, they had his beatification in Italy, and uh, they had his uh, his body on display wearing, I think, blue jeans and an Adidas shirt. You know, it's a little bit of a different look for, uh, for a saint that we're used to, but he's a very modern saint. And why am I uh, attracted to the person of Carlo Acutis? Well, of course, he's He's young, and I think he brings the brings young people to the faith in a big way. But he had a special devotion to Eucharistic miracles, Marian apparitions, all these things. He used his uh, training in computer technology to build websites and to do research uh, by compiling all the data on these miraculous phenomena. So that's that's how I've been spending my life is uh, compiling all that data and building websites and and programs and and apps for computers as well. So. I think that uh, you know he his uh, his approach to the miraculous really res resonates with me personally. And talk about some of these saints. Uh, I think right now I wanted to uh, point to the fact that I have a blessed Miriam. I won't try to say her last name. You can say that because I'll butcher it. Uh, but I have her relic with me. This is one of the saints that you um, did a, a show on in this series as well. Can you tell us about her? That's right. And what's what's exciting about the series is that the concept of the show is we're exploring the lives of Americans who are on the path to sainthood and the search for canonization miracles. Mm. And so somebody who's blessed, we know they have a miracle that's been attributed to the intercession. And so we look at the case of Blessed Miriam Teresa Demjanovic from New Jersey, and she's uh, she died very young. She died when she was 24 years old. And uh, the miracle that was uh, attributed to her was a boy who was cured from blindness. And uh, he had a relic just like you have, and he prayed and the family prayed and his eyesight came back. And we actually have an interview with him in the episode, mm. an interview with his mother as well, uh, who experienced this. And it's, it's absolutely beautiful. And when we talk about Blessed Miriam Demjanovic, Teresa Demjanovic, we're talking about somebody who ahead of her time really emphasized the universal call to holiness. It's not just for priests and nuns, even though she became a nun at, at, at some point in her life. Um, you know, a universal call to holiness, everybody is meant to be a saint. So I think that's a, a message that anybody of any age can get excited about. Yeah, she has some writings, uh, Greater Perfection. I encourage our viewers uh, to get those. We don't sell them religious catalog, but you have to seek them, seek them out through the sisters um, that, uh, her, where her body is up in New Jersey, the great, Greater Perfection. Um, talk about um, Blessed Michael McGivney. I think a lot of people know of the Knights of Columbus. We have a lot of Knights of Columbus viewers on EWTN uh, that support us. Talk about now our newest Blessed. I think this is exciting because he's a parish priest who died at the age of 38 years old, probably during a time of pandemic, and he died of pneumonia. So it's, his story is interesting in these times. It's very interesting. And one of the 
the great uh, blessings or excitement for what I do both as a, a miracle hunter and for uh, filming for EWTN is I get to go to these beatifications. So I was there in Connecticut and it was a very limited crowd due to the pandemic. They had to really keep everybody social distance and it was a smaller than usual kind of beatification, but it's very special to be there. And we're talking about the very first American parish priest uh, to be beatified. And, uh, you know, we have uh, priests throughout the world, uh, different orders and parish priests, but in the United States, he's the very first. So I think uh, he sets a great example for a lot of people and people turn to priests uh, for leadership and otherwise. But uh, he started the Knights of Columbus and we we see that in parishes all over the United States, an important, uh, an important uh role for the laity in the United States. And so I think that Michael McGivney, a young priest, died during a pandemic, uh, first parish priest, and uh, one of the very few blessings in the United States. We have Blessed Miriam Demjanovic, we have uh, Solanus Casey, we yes. have Francis Xavier, and uh, we have a couple of uh, martyrs actually as well. So, But it's a very small number of people who have been beatified in the United States. So uh, he, he joins those, those uh, very small ranks. Was there anything in hunting his life and studying his life that struck, struck you in a particular way? Anything that he said, anything that he did, the way he treated people um, that, that you, you as a lay person want me as a priest or other priests that may be watching um, to emulate? So what's exciting is when we do these episodes of They Might Be Saints, uh, we get to go everywhere that saint was and interview everybody who was connected to him in any way. So uh, right around the beatification, we had the crew and we traveled to the parish that he was uh, stationed at. Uh, we went all over to uh, different areas that he was involved with in Connecticut. And I think one of the interesting stories of Michael McGivney is how he dealt with people who weren't necessarily believers. He, was, uh, he opened himself up to them. He answered their questions. He made himself available. I thought that was a real, uh, real inspiration. So uh, he wasn't somebody just for Catholic men. He was for all, all sorts of different faithful and beyond. So I think uh, he's a great example for us as this uh, newest of American blessings. And some of the older crowd, uh, no offense to our older, older crowd, um, would know Father Patrick Payton, uh, the rosary priest. Um, such an incredible man. I got the chance to see a movie that um, was aired, really an incredible uh, um, experience. I mean, just watching him speak to thousands of people with passion. Um, talk about his life uh, and just the power of the rosary. So his is one of the most amazing stories that there is. And mm -hmm. I think when the series first started rolling, his was, story was on my mind as one that I wanted to do because here's a young man from Ireland who came over and he wasn't sure what he wanted to do in the United States, perhaps real estate or something else, but he got sick with tuberculosis and he was on death's door and he was actually studying to be a priest. That was, uh, that was his path at the time. And a fellow priest visited him and said, you need to give all this to Mary, offer it all up to Mary and put it in her hands and believe 100% in her intercession, and he did. And he was completely cured. It's a real miracle of a, of, a, of, a, of a future saint. And so when he was healed and he got out of the hospital, he said, what can I do to thank Mary for this? And he set out and he became the rosary priest. And he went all over the world and he really advocated for the pr praying the rosary. And believe it or not, he was seen by more people live than anybody in the history of the world until John Paul II. Now, mm. that's quite a claim to fame. Mm. And also, uh, Venerable Fulton J. Sheen, uh, is, is that somebody that you're, you're hunting as well? Yep, and he's the only person in the entire world who has an approved miracle yes. who's not a blessed yet Yes. because his cause got paused for a moment there. They need to, to reset, and now we've got uh, the, the coronavirus to deal with, but yes. his beatification will happen. It's just a matter yes. of time, and, of course, people know him as a great evangelist as well. So we have Patrick Payton, we have uh, Fulton Sheen, and we've been in, in discussions with that cause as well for doing a, doing an episode. So uh, it's exciting to look at any of these famous American heroes, uh, people uh, big and small who uh, really inspire us. Are there any other saints that are in the works, uh, not saints, but that, are there any other servants of God that you're looking at that aren't uh, shows yet that are in the process? It's a great question. So as part of this work, I keep my eye on many of the causes throughout the United States. And there's a little bit uh, fewer than 100 causes 
active in the United States. So, um, you know, when we look at uh, people like uh, uh, Emil Capon from Kansas mm -hmm. or uh, the Grunt Padre, uh, Capadano. So mm -hmm. these are some people who uh, there's been miracles attributed to them even before they're at the stage of venerable. So I think there's a lot of uh, potential in, in those kind of people. But uh, we'll see. I think uh, we're excited to feature these, uh, collaborate with the causes. The causes provide a fin financial contribution in order to help make these episodes. So it's really, really a fun thing to get to work with the causes very closely and to, to actually tell the stories of these uh, pe great people of faith. And you get to do that through your radio show. Maybe uh, kind of wind up the show uh, talking about your radio show that's uh, aired on EWTN Radio weekly on Saturdays. So I absolutely love doing the EWTN radio show. It airs on uh, Saturdays at 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. both. And on that show, I get to cover every miraculous topic there are. So you might tune in and hear about Eucharistic miracles. You might hear about the stigmata. You might hear about future saints. You might hear about Marian apparitions. And so I get to talk to the top experts in the world in all these different areas. And it's really, uh, the variety is, is quite amazing. So I feel very blessed to be able to do that show. Michael, thank you so much for uh, coming on the show with us and just, just sharing with us your passion and your faith. Um, I think, again, miracles are so amazing uh, in the life of the church. And um, maybe in, to wrap this up, we have one, one minute left, but your, your favorite miracle, uh, top of the list, if, if you could share that if you haven't already. So I always have to point to Our Lady of Guadalupe. Mm -hmm. We have a canonized visionary, uh, the apparitions of Mary. We have the miraculous Tilma mm -hmm. and uh, the conversion of 9 million people as a result. It doesn't get any better than that. And she has had a, uh, an impact on my life personally as well. So she always is number one in my book. Michael, thank you so much for uh, joining us in this show. And uh, God bless you in your work. And we'll be praying for you. Thank you. God bless. Brother John Therese, I, I don't know about you, but I always love talking about miracles or yeah. thinking about miracles. Uh, what he said at the end about Our Lady of Guadalupe, um, personally, I think so many of us are used to images of Our Lady, uh, statues of Our Lady, people trying to depict Our Lady, but that alone is, is a miracle, yeah. just the fact that the, it still exists, and itself is an impression that she left on the Tilma of Juan mm -hmm. Diego. Um, that is that is the greatest image that we have of her, yeah. the most authentic image that we have of the Blessed Mother on the face of the earth. Yeah. So I would agree that that's one oh, of yeah. my favorite miracles yeah. uh, that he talked about at the end. I think there was something really important that was said during the interview is how, you know, we hear about miracles from like 2,000 years ago yeah. in the life of Christ or even in the Middle Ages. But a lot of times people will ask, well, where are the miracles now? You know, you know, you hear about them so much in the past, but where are they now? Yeah. But the reality is that they are here. I mean, miracles are happening all the time. And I always like, if you just count all the miracles just from about 500 years ago to Our Lady Guadalupe, there's a staggering amount. There, it's overflowing. And just even in the United States with some of the saints like Solanus Casey, you can hardly read a page without reading a miracle involved. So I think we do need to be encouraged to actually seek out the miraculous because we don't hear that enough, I think, growing up. So. Yeah, I think just you mentioned Slans Casey, yeah. and he was a man, a very humble man, yeah. a porter, opened the door for people, mm -hmm. would greet people, and very often miraculous things would happen yeah, all the time. when he yeah, would we, pray with them. Yeah, prophecy, all sorts of things that, you know, a lot of times when you do read it, it's like a lot of times I think the natural inclination is, is it true? You know, we have to form an opinion like uh, Michael O'Neill said. It's like, you just can't just leave it alone. Yes. But a lot of times there is something that kind of nudges us to say, we need to seek this out, we need to answer. So. And he said, you know, for the believer, it stirs up their faith. Right. For the unbeliever, the skeptic, yeah. it challenges their mm -hmm. faith. Yeah. And so. I think too, even whenever I was reading the life of St. Therese, you know, after her death, there were just miracles all over the place. You can read the miracles of St. Therese. And there's just fabulous stories in there of healings, but I think even of families reconciling with each other that had been just torn apart, you know, and there's just different issues going on. And so I think, yeah, again, there's different kinds of miracles from like a moral or an intellectual to a physical. And I think the way the church kind of exposes all those and just kind of 
groups them together and just kind of presents them to us does build up our faith. Yeah, our go into the vineyard challenge is this week to seek the miraculous. Mm -hmm. uh, the miraculous is there. Read the Gospels, first of all. Mm -hmm. Read the Gospel accounts. Read the miraculous. Jesus himself, the miracle worker, he is the one doing the miracles. It's not us human creatures. It's God the one is the one who is doing the miraculous. I have a first class relic of a blessed Miriam who we talked about during the show. And I ask her special intercession upon uh, you. Ask her in a special way, if you need something, to heal you, to bring God's presence and his life within your, within your heart. May Almighty God bless you through the intercession of blessed Miriam. And may he give you his peace, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you for joining us on Life on the Rock. We'll see you next time. It's going down. Already. Don't call me comeback. We back like we never left. Ave Maria. Let's go. Hail Mary, come with me and the brothers crossing borders in the penitentiaries. I blew in the black with a badge and some slacks. It don't matter what you look like. God has you back from the Genesis. Pinpoint the nemesis. Pinned to the ground by a Jewish girl in Bethlehem. It's not irrelevant. People, the Messiah wrote. Reverence the God, man. Why you hoping high and rose? I'm 9 to 5 and it defining rhymes for retirement. But I admit my iron mind is finally that define what the lives of men have found within peace. I call her Mother Mary and she finds me when I'm down and sick. Oh my, Leah, like an honor, man, I be a joyful noise written. I'm speaking till the day I see her. No king, queen, I see her. Can't get better with creatures selected in perfection to birth the savior and teacher. Mama, we need. This world's gone mad. They still killing babies, still abusing the badge. Still thinking that one life matters more than the last. Hiding behind these ignorant comments and hashtags. We pass that. We look for your visions and apparitions because they show us you've always listened. We know you keep these things close in your heart. And I see me, Madonna, because we don't know where to start. Oh, Mama Mia, Maria, you carry God in you. Always devoted, immaculate, this the Leah. Anointed senorita with more soul than Adidas. You mother, the soul healer, the son of the soul leader. The one who's sitting high in the stone like nose bleeders. Only one to ride with me like we in a two-seater. We owe you the utmost, the most just won't see you. Even though you're so close to the most, we still reach you. Your will is God's will, that's something they don't teach you. Apparitions at different lands with no visa. Always putting in work and I know that we all need Throw stones in the old before I see ya. Okay. Dallas think you're trying to catch an interception. With all of these Hail Marys, we keep tossing. What the keep fumbling is that he chose you. Particularly to carry out the winning touchdown. Point toss for my soul. Here it goes. It'll always be the head that'll win the Joe. But I feel Satan would attack with a stunning blitz. That's when you're coming for the save. Michael Vick, I pray to serve you as you deserve with all of me. All I am taking me to the Super Bowl promised land. And I lie to you that I'm at your command Even if these haters don't care to understand You're the spouse of the spirit The daughter of the father The mother of the son You do the highest honor Mother of the king That makes the queen of heaven Perpetual virgin Immaculate conception Assumed into heaven at the moment of your death The Bible says that all generations call you blessed And blessed is the fruit of thy womb The one that caused your death for three days in the tomb Pray for us now and at the hour of our death So we can see the pretty gates when we lay the rest Blessed Mother Mary, let me proclaim my love for you Just like your only son, Jesus Christ, wants me too Maria, Maria, Virgo prudentissima Ora pro nobis, mate clementissima En nomine Patri, et Filii, Spiritu 